Well, I'd like to continue our discussion about soils and landscapes. We're in what's called the uh, Ridge and Valley province of central Pennsylvania. What we have is a series of ridges, which we're standing on one of the sandstone ridges. The, be the bedrock is sandstone. And if you look down, you'll see there's a, a broad limestone valley and then another series of sandstone ridges uh, beyond the valley. Now what we have here, again, we have soils that are developed from what we call residual parent materials. On the ridge top we have sandstones and they form a soil that's uh, sandy in nature and oftentimes has a lot of uh, sandstone fragments in it. As we go down the ridge, this particular ridge is flanked with what we call colluvial materials. Uh, these are materials that have moved down this ridge by forces of gravity and they flow down onto the limestone valleys. So the valleys again are formed of, uh, from limestones that have weathered away and formed what we call residual limestone soils. Now we'll be going down and taking a look at some of these limestone soils uh, shortly. But what we do when we map soils, we want to look at these geology landscape relationships. So if we're up here on the sandstone area, we'll try to describe and define what we call a pedon. We'll look at a soil profile and then we'll try to see if we can extend that soil out into the landscape. And we do the same thing when we get down into the colluvial soils and we do the same thing when we get down into the limestone residual soils. So what we do is we really take point observations and then try to extend them out into the landscape to prepare a soil map. Well, now we've just come down from the mountain top and as you remember we're at again the Ridge and Valley province so we have a series of sandstone ridges and limestone valleys. Now these sandstone ridges are flanked by something we call colluvium. And this is material that's moved down from these sandstone slopes by gravity. So all these ridges are flanked by what we call colluvium, material that's moved by gravity. Now all these colluvial soils have a fragipan in them. Fragipan, if you remember, is a dense impermeable layer in the soil profile and this actually holds up or perches water and what that does is some of the soils that are in the colluvial material have redox features or wet conditions. Now down, we're down here now in the limestone valley and these are soils that have been derived from limestone parent material that's weathered away to form this limestone residual soil. So what we have then, we have three kind of distinct kinds of landforms, the sandstone ridge, the colluvial material which starts where the ridge starts to become less steeply sloping and it comes down to about where the tree line ends or the field, the cornfield in the background where about the, that field uh, ends by the fence row. So that would be the colluvial material and of course I'm standing here on the limestone valley, the limestone residual material. So what we do when we, we want to start mapping soils, we want to get an understanding of the geology, the geomorphology of the site, so we kind of get an idea of what kind of soils would we expect to see. Now the next thing we do then is we have to look at something we call a pedon, which again is the smallest definable unit in the landscape. And we define these by a term we call soil series, which is the lowest level of the soil taxonomy. Now what we do then is we look at a vertical observation of a soil. We might use something like an auger or a shovel or, or a, a backhoe pit. Now, 
what we do then is we look at the soil profile, which is, again, the best way to look at it is, of course, with a, a excavation like a backhoe pit. And we describe uh, in this particular area four different uh, soil series. On the mountaintop, we describe a soil that we call Hazelton. Again, it's a, a soil that's developed from sandstone residual parent material. As we come down into the colluvium, we have two soils that we uh, describe. One is called the Andover, which is a very wet soil, and the other is called Buchanan, which isn't quite as wet, but it still does have uh, some of these internal drainage problems, and we describe those using these redoxomorphic terms that we'll discuss a little later in the course. And then we come down here in the valley, and we're on limestone residual soils, and the soil that we use here, the soil series name, is Hagerstown. Now once we've uh, identified the soil series, we have to map those in the landscape. So what we do then is we go out and describe polygons in the landscape. Now these polygons are just uh, natural units in the landscape. And they're usually at least about two acres in size or larger. And these units describe changes in the particular soil series, like a slope change. So if we have level slopes like we have here in the background here with this cornfield, that would be one type of mapping unit. When we look at the cornfield in the background, that's on more steeply sloping uh, soils, that would be another polygon. Simply uh, based on the landscape geometry, uh, the amount of slope that we have in the landscape. So we define a lot of different polygons, and the soil mapper actually traverses the entire landscape defining all these polygons and delineating them uh, on an air photo base and by a pencil or pen and the entire landforms are delineated throughout the landscape using this soil mapping approach.